Hey, hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me, The Stressed Woman with Louise Upton. I'm super excited to share this webinar with you today or masterclass with you today. So let's see if I can make my slideshow work. There we go. <laughs> so who is Louise Elizabeth? For those of you that don't know, my name is Louise Elizabeth. You might know me as Lou on Instagram or Louise, Louise Upton, kind of the, the mix of names that you may or may not have come across for myself. I am a snowboarder, a rock climber, a hiker, a book lover. I'm a dog mama. Um, I love spending my time outside. And really the reason I share that with you is because all of those things are really the start, like moving out West and starting to snowboard is what kind of brought me to where I'm at today, which I'm really grateful about and um, was the start of my entire journey. I'm a 620 hour registered yoga teacher, actually trauma informed registered yoga teacher. And the trauma informed just means that I have that lens that everybody comes from a different background, right? Like we all, we all have a different story. We, we um, just all have a different journey and things that we've been on. So it's just that in inclusive perspective lens um, that's different than the one I had in my upbringing. I am a registered holistic nutritionist. I am a professional network marketer. And overall, I'm just a woman who is not just, I'm a woman who is fascinated by the human body. And it, um, it really started with my own journey and just kind of being curious about how I felt. And that progressed to when I did my yoga teacher training, I was like, wow, there's so much about the human body. There's so much about the human mind. And then that progressed to what I was reading. And then I progressed to doing my holistic nutrition studies. And then I also did another few yoga trainings and it's just kind of rippled and rippled and rippled and rippled from there. So I am super um, grateful for my journey. And yeah, I really love the human body, but above all else, I really love the women, the woman's body, you know, like the woman's body is absolutely fascinating. And so that's part of why we're here today. So let's get right into it. The stress response. So it is commonly known as the fight or flight. You may or may not, may or may not have heard that. So the fight or flight, we also have our rest or digest. Stress response begins in the brain. So this, we're going to go through the stress response, what our body actually goes through, because it is useful in understanding what your body's going through and um, and why maybe, you know, if you're always stressed, you're, you're fatigued. And we'll talk a little bit later about that and kind of jumping ahead of myself. But the stress re response begins in the brain. So when a threat is detected, there's information from your brain that's sent to the amygdala, amygdala, amygdala amygdala and um so the stress response really begins in the brain and if you think about it, it kind of makes sense right and also sometimes we don't even realize like um you know you hear stories of these things that happen people are like i don't even know where that came from like my brain picked up that or my body everybody thinks it's their body but it's your brain because your brain is taking in you know it's like four billion four million bits of information but we're only registering maybe 50 percent of that and something happens over here and we're not even looking but your body just knows to jump out of the way of the car or whatever it is and you're like whoa what happened it's because the stress response that that fight or flight the survival mode starts in your brain and it's so fast the way the whole body ripples from there so uh, this will send a district sig signal to your hypothalamus. The hypothalamus communicates with your autonomic nervous system. So your ANS is something else that you may, he may have um, heard before. So in your ANS, you actually have two nervous systems. So now this is where you're, you have your fight or flight. So the sympathetic nervous system. Um, you may have also heard of rest, rest and digest, so the parasympathetic nervous system parasympathetic nervous system. I'm going to try not to overwhelm you with too much information. This webinar, ideally, I'm hoping for 30 minutes maximum. And like you could spend hours <laughs> talking about just your nervous systems alone and the stress response there, never mind everything else. So if I throw a lot of information at you and it seems like I'm throwing it fast, that's why. <laughs> so you have your um, sympathetic nervous system. So the fight or flight. And that's from your ANS, right? So the hypothalamus is like, hey, there's something going on. The ANS is like, oh, okay, is it fight or flight or rest or digest? Like literally it takes that moment to process, okay, it's fight or flight and it goes to your sympathetic nervous system and then it's activated. So the SNS, the sympathetic nervous system signals to the adrenals to make adrenaline. So adrenaline, among other things, but adrenaline is what we're talking about right now. So the adrenaline is sent to your blood, right? Which increases your heart rate and floods your, your muscles with blood. So the reason this happens is fight or flight, right? So, and we'll talk about the stress response and the chronic acute in a minute, but with fight or flight and um, your body and the, the sympathetic nervous system firing up and sending the adrenaline to increase your heart rate and, your, and get your muscles flooding with blood is because fight or flight, right? You're either gonna fight for your life or you're gonna run for your life. And that's your body being like, okay, we need to survive. 
We need to survive. And that's what it's doing. It's giving you adrenaline so that your body's like, okay, this is how we're going to survive. And then you can do the work so that you can survive. <laughs> so your adrenals will also release cortisol to help keep you alert. So that's the other thing that your adrenals release. So how that use, how that works, right? If you've ever been in a situation where um, there's an emergency happening around you, and even if you haven't been involved, just think about it for a second. There's an emergency happening around you, whether you're directly or indirectly involved. And there's two times, two types of reactions always, right? There's nobody in between. There's always two types of reactions. And it's fright. People are screaming, freaking out, or they're just like, ah, la, 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 la. Nobody can seem to think clearly. They're just like kind of going crazy running around. Or that we have the people that are sit there and they're calm and they just seem to be like, this is what we need to do. And, and they just know what to do, right? And of course, you know, there is kind of, I guess I said there's no in between. There is an in between where people are freaking around, but they know what they're, they're doing. They're using their brain. So this is where the cortisol comes to your brain. And it's like, okay, you need to be alert. You need to focus. You need to think, what are you going to do to survive, right? Or what are you going to do to to calm the situation, whatever it is? So it's pretty cool if you think about it. Like the stress response and the fight or flight, it's there to keep you alive. Like if something scary happens, if something bad happens, then you your body's alert, your your brain's alert, your body's ready to go, right? So um, that's really kind of cool that that's what your your body's doing. I just realized if anybody's trying to join, I'll have no idea. So I'm just stopping my screen share for a moment. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I think I put the, um, I think put the waiting room. Anyway, doesn't matter. Here I am. Okay. So why should we care? Right. So, okay. Yeah. That's cool. Louise. Why do we even care? Like, why are you doing a master class on this? The stress woman? What is it? What does it even matter? Why should we care? So the reason we should care is because we actually only have one response to stress, no matter how bad or mild something is, right? So if you're like, oh, that felt like a that felt like a one out of ten. Um, but you're still angry about it, or maybe someone cut you off in traffic and you're like, oh, and then you kind of let it go, or you think you let it go, and then you get home and you're thinking about it and you're still like arguing with your partner and you're just like overthinking about it, right? That might seem mild. Okay, that's not that stressful. I'm just in my head about it. La, 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 la. Versus like, you know, someone attacks you and tries to steal your purse or steal your bag or whatever, right? That might seem like a really bad um, stress response. Like, oh my God, someone trying to steal my purse. And like, I had to fight them off and I had to run. La, 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 la. And I went through all those motions that Louise just shared with me about the stress response. But the thing is, is you're not just in your head, right? What did we just learn two seconds ago about the stress response? we learned that it starts in our brain, right? So if someone cuts you off in traffic and you're thinking about it and you're lulling it over hours and hours and hours and you go home and you tell your partner and you're still lulling over it hours and hours and hours and hours, it's not mild, it's still in your brain. And no matter what, right, your brain still goes through, your body still goes through that process I just walked you through with the stress response. So no matter what, there is one response to stress, right? One response. Not a different one that we don't know about. There is one response to stress. And that's why we should care. Because in modern society, most of us are more or less in a constant state of stress. I'll repeat myself. Most of us are in a constant state of stress. Again, whether we realize it or don't realize it, whether we think it's mild or, or bad, we are in a constant state of stress. So it's very rare in our world for people to have an acute stressor in the modern world. So what I mean by acute stressor, and I kind of touched that I was going to get into this here, is acute stressor. And it's really interesting because the world evolved, right? We we think back to our ancestors and the way they lived life is so different from how we live life now. I can't imagine people, the the generation of people that, um, or whatever you want to call them, homeo, homeo whatever, is... Um, that discovered fire could imagine right now I'm sitting here on a laptop. I am video recording. I am audio recording because I'm going to upload a podcast about this. And I'm also taking a time lapse on my phone. I can't imagine that those people could even try and think that that is where we would be today, where, where they would evolve to, right? So different. But the way our bodies work in a lot of ways and the way the stress response works is very, very archaic for lack of a better word, right? We are still very much have the exact same process of what happens, our brain, our body, the, the, the hormones that get produced to our ancestors. 
We're still pri primal. That's the word that's better than um, arcane. We're still primal. So what did our ancestors do that most humans, if not arguably all humans, I mean, I don't know all, well, actually, no, there's probably still tribes in, in Africa or even in, in the rainforest that um, still a little more on that, that level of how they hunt food and things. But like most of us, most of you who are sitting here right now or listening to the podcast or who are watching the recording, most of us don't have to run away from a lion. Most of us don't have to run for hours barefoot to hunt our dinner. And if we don't hunt our dinner, we will starve. It's a matter of life and death for the entire tribe, not even just us. Okay, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of privilege and classes and everything like that. But even people who are starving right now, if they really, really need to, at least in certain countries, there are resources. And even then, they don't need to run for hours to chase a deer. So that fight or flight response, the way our body goes through that process, is still very, very primal. So why should we care? And the reason we should care is because a lot of us humans are in a chronic state of stress. Which means that our bodies are constantly, our adrenals are constantly producing hormones. Our brain is constantly, hey, nervous system, please, please make some adrenaline. Please flood the body. But we're not, well, a couple of things. One, we're not letting it go, right? That person who cut us off in traffic, we're thinking about it for hours, maybe even days, and then all of a sudden we hate red Nissans or whatever it was. And then we're also not burning off that adrenaline, that cortisol. We're not running. And then, okay. If you've ever been in a situation where you genuinely like i'll give an example uh in this past winter uh we were skin tracking up for touring and my skin it was icy and it was steep and my skin's just stopped working and i fell backwards and i was tumbling through the snow and i had that moment of fight or flight in in my body and it was such a weird sensation like i thought i was going to throw up afterwards and it was that moment where i was tumbling i was like oh my god i felt the panic and then i felt that moment of no you need to focus because you need to stop moving, Louise. What can you do? Start stamping your foot in the snow. That's, you know, a, a very, that was a situation where, and then we rode down and I burnt my energy off and it was fine. But that was a situation where, like, I could feel it in my physical body, especially that much adrenaline because the panic kind of took over even more so. But most of us in the modern world, we're not doing anything to burn off that extra adrenaline. We don't realize that our body is constantly in a fight or flight state. For a lot of people, that shows up as anxiety. That shows up as depression. It shows up as IBS. Because chronic stress has a long list of side effects and diseases that evolve from it. And another reason we should care, which I didn't put on my slideshow if you're watching the, the recording or you're here, is... Um, with our nervous systems, right? So I, I mentioned the, the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. So our rest and digest or the fight or flight is we can't actually be in both at once, right? So if you've ever um, really busy, right? If you're busy, you're doing work or you're stressed, you're at work, you're just like, go, 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 go. You just seem to not be hungry. And it's not because your body doesn't need food. It's because your body's in fight or flight. So it's not in rest and digest. So it's not sing it's not in a place to signal, hey, I need some substance here. I need some fuel. Or if you've ever gotten into a fight with your partner right before dinner and you were so hungry, you're so excited, or whatever, and then you get into an argument with your partner or your sibling, whatever, and you go to sit down, and you're just like, I've lost my appetite. You have quite literally lost your appetite because you went from being in rest and digest, smelling the food, getting excited about what you're you're making to in your fight or flight. And now your body isn't in both. It can only be in one. So that's why things like IBS, metabolism, long list of effects that come from being in a chronic state of stress. So stress and women's hormones. So again, I'm just going to repeat myself here. I know that they're like, we could spend 
hours <laughs> talking about these things and I am just flying through it. But I wanted to give you just a scratch of the surface to hopefully by the end of this, when we get to the what can we do part, you're like, you know what? Five, 10 minutes of my day is nothing when it comes to my health and my hormones, especially as women. So on top of everything I've just shared with you, why should we care? Chronic versus acute stress. We can't be in rest and digest and fight or flight. We're going to get a little more specific on the hormones here. So the stressed woman. And the reason I called this um, masterclass, The Stressed Woman, and I guess the podcast episode, we can call it The Stressed Woman, is because women are stressed. I, I'm not saying men aren't, but women we are, right? We want to do everything. We want that nurture, that that feminine side. If we're mothers, or even if we're not mothers, that sense of um, the, the being the nurturer of the household. But then we also want to have our own jobs. We also want to be independent. We want to have our own paychecks. So we're really just fully embracing the feminine with a masculine type of, of focus. And then we're fully embracing the masculine with a masculine type of focus. Last time I checked, masculine, masculine, feminine, masculine, that's not a balance. So, you know, whether it's bringing the kids and feeding the kids or um, trying to have a full-time career and, you know, doing things for the household, us women are busy. And then on top of that, we have a 28-day cycle. So we just don't function the same as men. We just don't. I'm not saying we can't do what men do, don't do, but this whole idea that female feminine is the same as masculine male is so wrong. It's not doing us a, a, any service at all as women. We have a 28 day cycle. We, in theory, if everything's balanced, should be bleeding once a month. Men don't do that. And not even just that, over those 28 days, you know, we, we build up a uterine lining just to shut it. It's actually quite beautiful when you break it down, or 28-ish days, I should say. So stress in the women's and women's hormones. So stress is closely tied to your adrenal function, as we just learned, and the production of certain hormones, primarily cortisol and adrenaline, as we just learned. So the longer we are in stress, the more cortisol is produced. So that's what's the the important, or not the important part, but the the part that really um, sticks out as a as a woman, is the longer we're in stress, the more cortisol is produced. So as progesterone and cortisol share metabolic pathways, your body will eat up progesterone when it's stressed to meet the demands of cortisol. Okay, so that might not mean anything to you if you don't uh, fully know how your, your hormones work over a monthly cycle, and that's okay. But that is important because it eats up the progesterone. So elevated cortisol levels affect your natural I wrote 28 day cycle. I shouldn't assume it's 28 days for everybody. It's usually like 20 to 30 something days is kind of the sort of sweet spot ish that, that like, as long as you're um, regular with your own days. But anyway, so this contributes to estrogen dominance. So estrogen dominance and estrogen dominant conditions are things like PMS, um, PCOS, endometriosis, fibroids, cancer. Because Estrogen is a pro-growth hormone. And it's not all bad. I know estrogen gets a bad rep. But the reason this is important for women's hormones is we need to have estrogen and progesterone balanced over the month. And cortisol, when we're in a constant state of stress, eats up the progesterone. So in the second half, and for women that struggle to get pregnant, taking a moment to analyze your stress management and your stress levels could potentially be the, the key or the last piece of the puzzle that you're missing. Because if you don't have enough progesterone, your body cannot, because you need progesterone to shed, and you also need progesterone to get and stay pregnant. So if you constantly are getting miscarriages, most likely because your progesterone levels are too low or you don't have enough. Or like women that are put, that are, um, you may or may not know a woman, that and she was put on like bed rest for the first three months of her pregnancy. She was high risk at uh, miscarrying because progesterone levels are too low, most likely. So on top of all of this, like we're you know like everything I've just shared, and you know we could go down the wormhole of blood sugar levels, which is a whole other thing for women as well. Like when we're hangry or we're not eating enough. This also affects our hormones, how they're produced, the cycle. But your adrenals get fatigued, right? If they're constantly working. 
your body's constantly working with your adrenals to make adrenaline and cortisol to to potentially save your life, right? Because your body wants to live. Your body's always trying to find homeostasis or stay alive or, well, really both, right? So if, it, if, if there's a threat, again, it doesn't matter how bad or mild it is, still a threat. Your brain still goes through the same thing, the adrenals, the nervous system, et cetera, et cetera. That's energy. That's energy that's just being drained from you. Never mind your hormones and how that affects your 28 days working properly. Or not properly, I shouldn't say. Working um, in flow. So I already touched on this, but stress also affects your digestion, right? Which will affect food breaking down. So you can eat when you're stressed. Just because you're in one nervous system and the other's nervous system doesn't mean you can't eat. But it affects breaking down food which affects the absorption and the assimilation of nutrients. And why that's important is because your adrenals need nutrients. Your hormones need nutrients. Your body, your metabolism, it needs nutrients. And if your body isn't breaking down and absorbing it, we can still eat food, but that doesn't mean our body breaks it down and absorbs it. So it's really important when you're stressed to not eat. <laughs> and you're like, well, Louise, we need to eat food. And, and we'll kind of chat on that in a second. So that's just like the tip of the iceberg, but hopefully that's at least enough information to, to at least for you to be like, oh, okay, all right, I need to start managing my stress. So what do we do, Louise? It's all great. Thank you so much. <laughs> but what do I do? So what to do? First and foremost, stress management. You have to have a stress management routine. Okay. And you hear that and you're like, oh my God, I don't even know. Stress management does not need to be complicated. Stress management can be as simple as doing more things for you. So I have a list here of really great little tips and tricks that you could start with ASAP. So the first is eating and eating more than you think. Now I know I said, Louise, don't eat when you're stressed. I understand. So when you're going to eat, put the stressors away. Close your eyes, take a couple of deep breaths, big inhales, longer exhales, and then eat your food. And when you eat your food, look at it. Get curious about it. Turn that part of your body on, the, the rest and digest, by really getting into and curious about the food. Another good thing you can do, especially um, if you are suspicious that your adrenals are fatigued and worn out, is a good quality multivitamin slash antioxidant rich supplement. If you don't know a good quality, feel free to reach out to me. I do have access to one that I highly recommend. The next is slow down. And I put this in capital letters because we just don't work on the same clock as men. The 24-hour, get her done, let's do this clock. We just, we just don't. It's a reality. Our hormones just don't function that way. Once you've hit menopause, your, your hormones do go back to the 24-hour clock. And until you have one year with no period, you are still working on the woman walk, we'll call it. <laughs> so slow down. Say no. Put some white space in your schedule. And like, I get it, Louise. You don't understand. I have that, 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 that. I do get it. You need to slow down because my question is at what cost of not slowing down? Your health, your mental health, your physical health. Your hormonal health, now that we know what stress does to the body. Okay. So get some good quality sleep to counter the effects of stress. And that's a whole other matter masterclass on itself. In itself, on itself, in itself. Meditation, journaling, setting strong boundaries. And what I mean by setting strong boundaries, say no. Say no without an excuse. Set boundaries of this is me time and do the me time. No guilt, <laughs> no questions asked, none of that shenanigans. Have deep breathing practices and learn to let go. And learning to let go is a process. It takes time. But what I will say about learning to let go, again, that's a whole other masterclass on its own, is when you are focusing on learning to let go, the more that you do the personal development and really all of these suggestions I've given, the personal development and the self-worth. And when I mean self-worth, I mean like you and loving you and knowing how beautiful and special and amazing you are. A lot of these to-do list things for stress management are a no-brainer. 
an absolute no brainer. Now, I know it's easier said than done. The self love, the self worth, but just remember you are amazing. Okay, so whatever it is that your resistance is, you're worthy of it all. You're worthy of a stress management routine, your hormones, you, all of it. Okay, so what to do for stress does not need to be complicated. And in fact, a little goes a long way. Okay, we're almost done here. So what makes sense to you? So I'm a big believer there's no one size fits all to anything. Like there, there, absolutely anything in this world, there is no such thing as one size fits all. Clothes, life, things we love, the way we speak, all of it. So I'd love to know, and I can't actually see the chat, so you can put it in the chat if you want. Otherwise, write it down and share it with me. <laughs> so I won't read them out. But whether you're listening to this podcast, I want you to think about it. I want you to either come back to these questions or when I ask a question, press pause and think about it if you're out and about doing things. But what stood out to you in today's masterclass? So what was it that I learned today, that you learned today? And it can be one thing and maybe it's something you relearned today. Or you're just, for whatever reason, hit differently. What stood out to you in today's masterclass? And then my second and last question for you is what are one to three things you can implement today to support the effects of stress in your body. And it, literally, it can be one thing and it can be 10 minutes out of your morning. So again, don't tell me, oh, well, Louise, you don't understand. I don't have any time. I do understand. You do have time. Five minutes is not long. I promise you, if you were to log every single minute of every single day that you have for the next week, you could find something out of every single day that you can cut and replace it with something that's useful to you and your health and your hormones and your stress management, <laughs> without a doubt. So just quickly, I wanted to share two little things with you are ways that you could possibly work with me if you're listening to this and you're like, oh my God, like <laughs> I need to do some work. <laughs> There's two ways. So the first is through the Fundamental Women's Hormones course. Some of you may or may not have heard of it. It is over 13 years of my own journey and learning experiences piled into an easy to digest course. It's nine modules of content. You have eBooks, PDFs. I've created everything. Each module is broken down into more videos. I'm um, in the email where I'll send out the recording. I'll put the link that you can go and see the nine modules. This course is, I'm a big believer in learning. And for me to implement changes, it's been all about learning the why because for some reason, the how to's just kind of really just, it's, I don't want to say easy from there, but they just kind of flow from there. And so that's why I created this course. And I'm a, I love learning. I love taking courses. I love just all of that stuff. So that's why this beautiful course has been created for you, uh, for women, I should say, and you. <laughs> um, I do want to say for everybody that is on listening to the recording, if you're listening to the podcast, by the time this podcast is released, this deal will not be available to you. But if you privately message me and you really want to do it, we can chat about it. But 72 hours only, I'm offering a 20% off on the course. So the course codes, again, they'll come out in the email. The Stress Woman, the Stress Woman for, actually, you know what? I am changing what podcast I'm going to release tomorrow. So if you're listening to the podcast, you will have this 20% off discount for 72 hours. <laughs> so the Stress Woman, the Stress Woman 4, the Stress Woman 6, the Stress Woman 8, the Stress Woman 12. And those numbers are just for whatever payment plan option you decide to go on. If you want to pay in full, four months, six months, eight months, 12 months. Um, so yeah, if you're on the, if you're listening to podcasts, you'll get access to that as well. Um, I do just have a thank you here and um, thank you for joining. But I wanted to, before doing that, say the other way that you can work with me, I won't get too into the details, but I have recently kind of hush hush released this just kind of behind the scenes has been really lovely the wellness restore um and the reason I called it the the restore sorry not restore the restore is because I really believe that all of us have the information and knowledge inside of us of what to do and sometimes we just need someone to help bring that that information to the surface and because we're all, we're all unique like I mentioned no one size fits all right so it's three or four months one-on-one -on -one, um nutritional support with me and so there's a few things that are involved and I'll just fly through them really quickly and then if you'd like to chat about that then send me a message ASAP but there you get uh, nutritional assessments so we look at your whole life you fill out these forms we look at your whole life I played like kind of like detective and I go in 
I look at foods that'll be useful, supplements, lifestyle changes. I also give you an overview of things that you filled out. So you actually get to learn a lot about your own body and how it functions and what may or may not be going on. Um, and then we have weekly calls. So the very first call will be 60 minutes to kind of go through your assessment, um, kind of go through your your personalized workbook that I make for you. And then the last call will be 60 minutes so that we leave you a success moving forward. And then every week in between will be a 15, 20 minute weekly check-in to see how you're going. If we need to rearrange your goals in any way, um, if you're you're feeling stuck, we're all there. Of course, you'll be able to text me as per you need to throughout the 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 four months. Um, and then you, like I mentioned, you need a personalized work workbook. So I, I put all this information to a beautiful workbook for you that you fill out. And then we use that workbook to move forward. Um, you get a three day, day meal guide. You get the wellness tracker ebook that I have. If it's something that you wanted to add to your routine, you get a weekly diary. So a weekly food diary I've created for you. You go online, you add the, the information in, and then I can see what you're eating. And then we can kind of chat about those things as time goes on. And then you also get free access to my 28 day mindfulness plan. So if that's an interest to you, please send me a message so that we can chat more about that. And yeah, I really, 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 really appreciate every single one of you. Whoops. I don't know why I started sharing my screen. Every single one of you that are listening to the podcast or watching the recording that are here right now. I absolutely love teaching for me. That is something I always wanted to be as a little girl. So this is my way of doing it in the in a non-conventional type of way, we'll say. So I'm super excited to be sharing this information. And I do really value and appreciate that you're trusting me to share this information with you because, um, you know, who we fill our heads with. I, I'm someone that I listen to podcasts, audiobooks, I read books. And what I'm putting into my head, I really value. It, it is a high value thing for me. And so I'm, um, yeah, super excited to be sharing that with you. So thank you again, wherever you are in this beautiful world. And um, have a beautiful day.